Uh, good afternoon. It is Friday, July the 3rd. Tomorrow is July 4th, so happy Independence Day. Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And uh, a lot of stuff coming up, lots to look forward to. Um, next week, the women are having their, their head party um, on Friday instead of on the third Friday of the, of the month, so that'll be real fun. Um, if you want any more uh, specifics about it, we're going to be posting some stuff about that on Monday. I know they always have a fun time. And then the week after, um, which is the week that it normally is for that, uh, there'll be VBS. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of exciting things happening. Um, so today, I actually want to talk about two different, two different things. Um, the first thing is about reading your Bible. And it's not really related to the second thing, but I just kind of wanted to help you along. I don't know if any of you decided to do one of the Bible reading for the years. Um, I know the church always pushes for it every year. Um, but if, if you are one of those people and you've stuck through it, uh, stuck to it through this whole um, coronavirus thing, I mean, kudos to you. <laughs> that, uh, that it's, it's been difficult to stick with stuff like this. Um, it seems like there's kind of this attitude that we've, unfortunately, a lot of us let in where we just kind of um, stop trying and we just kind of put things on the back burner and we don't take care of stuff. We don't we don't strive anymore and that's that's not a great not a great thing not a great uh, rut to get into. Um, I know I've been to a number of businesses that it's like they've accepted um, just giving a mediocre um, service. You know where where things that don't really matter. I mean, like here, here's a here's a good example um, at a hotel. Uh, where they wouldn't give us um, the toothpaste, you know, the, the single-use toothpaste things that they say, hey, ask the front desk, and you, those, those, like, little, <laughs> they probably cost, like, 20 cents a pack. I'm mean, sorry, 20 cent, cents a pack. Um, I mean, they're just not that expensive. And, oh, no, we're not giving it out because of coronavirus. It's like, see what I mean? We're accepting, um, we're going to do something at subpar. We're going to do a mediocre effort on something. And I feel like as leaders, we've kind of done that too. I'm not going to strive for anything. I'm not going to impart vision or dreams or, or, or a better tomorrow. We're, we're just not going to focus on that. We're just going to get by. And I feel like as parents, we've done that. Um, you know, I, because I can't have life how I normally have it, let's uh, instead just kind of accept the status quo of doing things poorly. And uh, I mean, we, we've done it as Christians. We've done it as, as in all the different areas of life. Um, there's just this real negative uh, side effect that's happened where we've just kind of accepted something less than pushing ourselves. And I think that that's kind of a dangerous area to get into because it's, it's really easy to get kind of lax in life. Um, and that's just not a great place to be in. So there's a few things. Um, if you have uh, stopped reading your Bible for this year, um, for that reading plan. I want to encourage you to get back into it. And there's a few things you're going to notice. The first step you're going to go into is where you're going to have all kinds of reasons not to read the Bible. You're going to say, oh, there's going to be interruptions. Things are always going to come up. Oh, I overslept. Uh, my kids need me. I need to do this. I need to do this. Interruptions. Um, or you're going to come up with reasonings in your own head. Um, uh, it's outdated. I don't really need it. I can get by on my own. I'm fine. Um, and then as you start reading it, um, you're going to find that you start getting a really bad attitude. You're going to start struggling with things that you weren't struggling with. You're going to say, why am I even wasting my time if it's going to get worse and not better? If you can make it, excuse me, if you can make it through this step, you get to step two. And this is where you start gradually, slowly starting, start realizing a change. A real slow process. But, but, it, but it will happen if you stick with it. And then you're going to start finding that you have more peace about things. You're, you're more patient about things. Um, you you will you you'll learn perseverance in other areas too. Um, it's just something that kind of filters over. Um, you'll be happier about it. You'll be happier in general. Um, and then you get to this next stage, the third stage, where you know I, I don't really need to do, read this anymore. I can skip a day because I've grown so much. Um, you know I know it all. The the Bible doesn't really have anything to say to me because you know I I just I kind of already know what's there. Um, sometimes in the stage we start seeing how the Bible applies to everybody else <laughs> and not to us. Um, then the next, uh, then the next uh, stage, there's so much more here than I thought there was. And 
I was so wrong in my attitude, and I'm so glad that I stuck with this because there's so much more for me to learn. Then you get to the next stage, and this stage and the one after it are, are the ones that you're going to kind of hop back and forth on throughout the rest of your life. Uh, this one, <laughs> let's just get through this. You know, okay, I have a lot of stuff to do, but, you know, I'm supposed to read my Bibles, and it becomes like a tradition. Uh, you're not really paying attention, you're not really learning anything, you're just reading it to read it, to get through it, because that's just what you do. And then when you read it, it's the same same thing, you haven't learned anything new, it's just, okay, I already knew that, and you keep going, and you just, okay. And either this this stage will, will go on to the point where you start going backwards, or you'll eventually get to the next and final stage, and then eventually bounce back to the stage again. And the final stage is, I keep seeing new stuff. It's where you start reading the Bible, but your heart has developed this this just a passion to know more about God and to be changed and to be different. God, I, I don't I don't want to be the same person as yesterday. I don't care if everybody else thinks that, you know, I'm the world's best thing or the world's worst thing. I, I just don't care. I, I, I just want to hear more of you. I, I just want I just want more of you in the situation. I want more of you in my life. I, I wanna I wanna think more like you. I just wanna be more like you. And eventually, there's going to be the hardness that comes, and you'll go back into reading it for tradition. And it's really up to you what happens when you reach those places of dryness. Either you will say, God, I, I have something going on here that I don't like. And, and you're going to start seeking after God and worshiping and stuff and keep reading it, and it's going to become more again. Or you're eventually going to just kind of back off and say, yeah, it's just not worth the effort. So, you know, keep that in mind as you're going. If you have... Like most of us, stopped with your reading plan, your Bible reading plan for the for the year. Uh, please pick that back up. Um, your family needs it. You need it. <laughs> it's just it's just something that really uh, will will impact your life. Um, so the thing I wanted to talk to you about today, I know there's more, but wait, there's more. Um, uh, is getting upset. I have uh, five kids, and <laughs> and they're not the only ones that I've I've raised. I've I've raised more than that. I've been raising kids for a long time. <laughs> um, and one of the things that you see with raising kids is how they handle getting upset. There, there's two big um, big ways <laughs> that, they, that they respond. The first way is the crying on the ground. Um, they just can't see a solution. They can't be reasoned with. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. They lie down on the ground. Sometimes they'll kick if they're, you know, less disciplined. If they're more disciplined, they'll know that that doesn't fly. <laughs> but uh, anyways, and, uh, and uh, you know, the, the whole distraught thing. Okay, and then the second, the second way that, that uh, they handle this is the working themselves up. So maybe it was just like this big of an issue and they just kind of turned it into like the world's largest mountain. And so they're, they're complaining, they're, they're ranting, they, they, they're like beside themselves with, with rage. And you know, uh, the, the voice sometimes go high, goes high pitched. You know, it's just absolute crazy, craziness going on. And uh, then I realized this unfortunate fact is that as, as adults, we still do the same things. <laughs> It's not really something that you grow out of. It's not something that you learn. Um, I'm going to start acting more mature. It's something that you will still struggle with. And uh, in life, you are either going to face problems crying on the floor and not seeing a solution, or you're going to work yourself up really, really bad. And it's gonna, you're going to make the problem worse than it needs to be. And none of the solutions are very good. Um, one of the things that I, I've got one, one big crier. And one of the things I try and instill in her is if you're going to cry, do it standing up. And the idea is crying doesn't really fix the problem. It might make you feel better for a time, but it really doesn't fix anything. And if you're going to cry, if you're going to break down, you, you need to do it with the idea of I'm not giving up. And when you allow yourself to just lie down on the ground and just, oh, everything's going wrong, it, it does something in your head. But if you take that step of courage, and I do mean courage, to not lay down on the ground and to just say, you know what, I don't like this, but this is the hand that I've been dealt, and I'm going to find some way through it. So a lot of times, I've seen a lot of leaders do this. I've seen a lot of leaders do this where this whole coronavirus really messed with people's plans. Surprise. <laughs> I know it messed with my plans. 
And a lot of what I've seen, unfortunately, in leaders is this kind of a response. Well, I don't like it. I didn't ask you to like it. <laughs> you know, it, it, as a leader, you don't have to assess whether you like a situation or not. As a leader, you have to assess, okay, so how do I move forward from here? How do I lead the people who are behind me forward from here? You can't let, sit there lying, sitting on the ground crying about it. You, you can't do that. Um, the, the governor gave a, gave an order now where if you are not wearing a mask, they're going to start fining people. Um, and it's easy to do something like this. Well, I don't like that. I don't like her. I'm just going to sit on, I'm just, I'm not going to wear a mask just to prove her, just to show her. It's like, as leaders, as of our families, of the church, of, of, of the community, whatever your role is, you can't just sit on the ground and cry about a problem. And you can't work yourself up about it. You might not like the situation, and that's going to happen in life. No matter who you are or where you are, you're just going to run into problems that you don't like. But you have to find a way forward. You have to do a lot of creative thinking. You have to be extremely flexible. And you have to stop saying, that's not the way I want to do it. It's hard, but it is something that's necessary. You have to, you have to learn to get past doing things that you don't like doing. It's not going to be natural. And it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very time-consuming. But remember those bratty little kids that you see in Walmart who, you know, ah, but I want this toy, and they throw themselves on the ground. Don't be that as an adult. We think just because we've got more sophisticated in how we throw our fits that we're not throwing fits anymore. It's like, well, no, yeah, we, we still are throwing fits. Um, so I want to encourage you, as, as you're facing difficult situations, I know you are because we all are. Um, maybe you're having a hard time with anxiety or panic or depression. Maybe you're having a hard time with, with anger. Maybe you're having a hard time with patience. Uh, I mean, there's just so many different things. Maybe, if you're like me, every different hour of every different day, you're dealing with something else. <laughs> I've conquered patience. Kind of, for the past 20 minutes, I've conquered patience. Um, so remember those, those, two, those two typical responses that kids do. They throw themselves on the ground and abandon all hope, or they sit there and work themselves up about it. Just take a step back, calm down. And I tell, I tell my kids this. I, I, I wonder if it'll help you at all. Take a deep breath. Go do something else. If something's really irritating you, it could be politics. It could be finances. It could be uh, the masks. It could be any number of different things. If something's bothering you, just take a step back. Take a breath. Go do something else. Um, if it bothers you that much about wearing a mask, for instance, I know a lot of people have uh, breathing difficulties. It's, it's hard for them to breathe to wear a mask. Um, Walmart actually has where you can order ahead of time and have it taken out and delivered to your car. And uh, then you wouldn't have to wear the mask. Um, and then you can just be on your merry way. You don't have to work yourself up about it. And if there's something about politics that, that's, that's bothering you, maybe just go do something else. Um, you, you, you can't keep letting something poke you and bother you and then say, you know, um, uh, you know, this is, this is, this is bothering me, so I should keep on doing it so I keep getting bothered. You gotta be smarter than it. And, uh, so I hope that this has helped you. Really, I hope it has. Uh, really great. And guys, have, have a great weekend. Try, try to just unwind. Have a, have a good fun time. Um, you know, what, whatever your plans are, whatever, just try and have a good time about it. Try and relax and unwind. And remember that, that there's more than just the battle. There's more than just the thing that's irritating you. There's much more to life. Uh, there's more to life than, than wearing or not wearing a mask. You know, whatever. It's, 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 and enjoy what you got. And enjoy the day that you have. And uh, just try to make the best out of everything. And I, I hope you guys have a great July 4th weekend. Uh, happy Independence Day, guys.